My guests this week are Colk. Welcome back. Hello. Hey all. <laughs> so for those of you just tuning into this one, uh, we actually had a very long conversation a couple of years ago, actually, when I first met you guys. can't believe it was that long ago. Yeah. Um, it was when you first released your first joint single, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was... Um... That was a I want to say 2017, day. maybe early 18. No, you just said two years ago. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I, I think 18. I'm still in 2019, to be honest. <laughs> I haven't yeah. accepted it's 2020 yet. It's because it isn't really a year. We're going <laughs> to skip this year. But yeah, that's, that's a long time ago. And obviously we've done so much stuff together since then. But then, technically, we haven't seen each other in like six, seven months. Not because of other factors now. But just because we've been busy in general, um, obviously we were meant to do something in April, but we won't talk about that because that, that's just on the back burner. But yeah, let's talk about what we were doing about six, seven months ago. Wow. Well. Yeah, yeah. We, we were in Cape. Well, the last time we saw you, it was it. Um, we were both. We were all like fucking dead. <laughs> we were extremely hungover. Yeah. I mean. Maybe rewind 24 hours from the actual last time we saw each other <laughs> at the airport. It was kind of late. So 24 hours from then, we were uh, in a student bar playing a card game where I had to put a card on my head and control when people pee. Um, See, I don't remember much of this card game. No, I, didn't, um, I didn't think you would. I didn't actually understand the game. In the I didn't understand. Place. It was a Danish card game. It sounded so. very confusing. And they were just like, oh, yeah, the rule is that you have to drink if you do this or that. And I was just like, well, why don't we just drink? I think put your thumb on the table. <laughs> And then, like, yeah. if you're the last person, it's yeah, strange. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've, played, I've played similar games. But, I mean, when you're drinking, you don't really need to play games like that. No, you just kind of no. want to drink anything's anyway. fun. <laughs> it's not really a thing that's done here as much. It's just like, oh, the the Grab game is you're at the pub, so drink. <laughs> that would be good now. And whoever drinks, <laughs> drinks the most wins. <laughs> exactly. And if you leave the pub, you know, in an ambulance, then you've won. <laughs> you've won. Yeah. I think in Copenhagen, I won that drinking game, or just just the pub drinking game in general. I think oh, I won yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think we're a close second. I, yeah. I don't know, I don't know. Although, yeah, we were putting, we were like, uh, we got to the point where we were like, oh, I don't want to do shots, so I'm putting shots into my drink. <laughs> Making a fucking disgusting rum and coke. Yeah, oh, I remember your rum and cokes. Yeah, there was yeah, many. Yeah. yeah. Those, those, weren't, those weren't the nicest rum and cokes I've had, because no. they had several shots of tequila in them. <laughs> okay, so we've established we were in Copenhagen. We were drinking lots. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else were we doing there? We're playing a gig. <laughs> yeah. A gig. What are those? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were in Copenhagen. It was kind of a cr like cross promotional event with Best of Row Rock Radio. They do similar stuff to Local Distortion over there. And we combined, we put on a gig together at Rust, which is somewhere in Copenhagen. It, it's in the city, isn't it? <laughs> the tube is confusing. You leave the tube and you don't know where you are. And then you're like, ah, yeah. oh, rust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, there's many helpful apps that can get you around if you don't understand Danish. So, yeah. But it is it is in Copenhagen. It does count. So, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's definitely yeah. there. It was definitely there. <laughs> it definitely was, yeah. So now that's kind of all sunk in, how was it for you? That experience it was amazing yeah it was like my best weekend ever man it was uh yeah, yeah I, mean, I think it was like with every it was an amazing gig on its own even if it wasn't in copenhagen which is obviously amazing but the gig itself was really great i think we, loads of people we got so many really nice compliments um i met with so many people yeah so many other people and it was, it was it was great seeing how like i mean the, the venues there were like and amazing it was a really really nice venue and the, the fact that they like bought us dinner like the venue yeah, that's dinner. like the most shocking thing isn't it yeah so good. and it was tasty yeah, yeah was really and there was backstage beer there was, there was just so much beer so, so much beer. bottles of water 
I mean, Trouble. they just like completely just wine and dine you there, don't they? Mm. It's, yeah, it's so nice and yeah, it's so uh-huh. weird at the same time, isn't it? Because over here you're just not used to that hospitality at all. So we <laughs> really need to stop that here. I think be nice. <laughs> so many people like aren't bothered then about getting paid so much. Like you shouldn't yeah. be anyway. But yeah. to be able to be treated really respectfully. Yeah. Make uh, like amazing. But that but that is a common thing out there. It's obviously the way it worked was like they obviously sort you out with food, drink. I think we got discount at the bar as well. Uh, yeah, we got like oh, yeah, drink yeah, tokens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, beer tokens and I think in other circumstances most of the venues pretty much always want bands to play there because mm. the bands bring the business. Half yeah, the time, true. the venues either supply you with everything you need or they will actually pay you to play. Yeah. So it's just, it's kind of the way it should be, I think. Definitely. Yeah. You need that here. Don't yeah, it, it shows you that the system can still work without mm. yeah. bands having to fork out money for venues and that type of thing. Um, yeah. Because yeah. obviously we, we did kind of a similar thing uh, when we did the Rest of Row Rock Fest. Yeah, we didn't pay for the venue. The venue was completely free. Yeah, because they knew that you bring bar sets and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. and then we obviously got like beer tokens and stuff. We had to obviously supply supply the sound guy, but all the equipment was there. We could mm-hmm. pretty much have an entire backline if we wanted to, which was completely fr- uh, from the venue. Yeah, um, yeah, and obviously the sound desk was all there. It was all set up. Uh, the PA was all, all at the venue as well, so it was just why isn't more places like this? Yeah, you know, it just makes it so less food. stress for everyone, and then you have such a nice time. Yeah, it's, it's so much more relaxing. It was just yeah, it, you just had nothing to worry about. It was just because you, you knew people were going to come, so yeah, you could just enjoy yourself, and there was just no stress. And yeah, it just makes the whole experience just so much more enjoyable. I think. And yeah, obviously going back to the f- the first one in, in November, it was just yeah, it's just a great crowd. All the bands were just so welcoming and just yeah, yeah. such nice people. Like shout out to Foon and and Red Wolves who will probably be listening. <laughs> yeah, it was just an amazing weekend. Like stay with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we just crashed on the floor. It's just like who cares, you know? No. <laughs> we're drunk. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, we're like. <laughs> <laughs> matter no yeah i mean after experience like that it's just like who cares it's it's all good when when you're in a place like that so yeah yeah. matthias is listening i've had uh several bottles of mead after having it at his we we, like (laughs) when we got home and we bought some immediately yeah Yeah. it's like i don't know what it is about it it's like perfect for like just like a little glass of that before bed Mm. Every time I see those So, Tom, onions. you've technically not stopped drinking since Copenhagen. Uh, I would uh, say so. Yeah. I would say so. <laughs> Just every night having having a cold one. Having a cold mead. Yeah. Talking of which. <laughs> oh, no, uh, I finished it because I thought it was out of date. What well, is it? Oh. I was going to say, don't drink out of date, Budweiser. I've, I've done that. <laughs> it's oh. not fun. <laughs> does it go out of date? How, how long does it take? 2021. Okay, uh, you're fine then. That's doable. To yeah. be fair, have that in your cupboard. Thought a beer would go in a cupboard without being drunk for a year. <laughs> Maybe not here. <laughs> anyway, moving on. You've decided to release an album. See. It wasn't supposed to be an album. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was supposed to be an EP. Okay. Uh, but we, what happened? We got carried away yeah. and wrote more than four tracks. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, we, we intended to write a few and then cut it down. Then we wrote so many that it was like, oh, even cutting this down now, it's going to be an album's length. So at first we were like, oh, two EPs will mm-hmm. save one. And then we we're like, I don't know, the second EP is just going to sound like the first one because we were recording at the same time. They're going to yeah. be. Yeah. So it's like, why re- release two samey sounding EPs when you can just like yeah. have like a full thing it just felt like a big commitment but i like that yeah yeah i didn't want to be i didn't want to release i mean it's been ages since we've actually properly released anything like we've done home demos and stuff but it's not the same and it's not like polished and yeah Yeah. i suppose it has been maybe almost two years since 
the proper release of yeah maybe a year and a half or something yeah Actually. coming up to two years anyway i think maybe <laughs> yeah um but yeah you've obviously like put out a couple of demos here and there which i think did one end up on the album i think it did yeah. didn't it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And I was quite surprised when I saw the track list, actually. I was like, hmm, there's some songs which I thought would be on here, but they're not. Yeah, yeah. But my kind of thinking after listening to the album in full was the tracks that aren't on there, I think, work so much better in your live set than Mm. maybe if they would. Definitely on this album with this collection of songs. Yeah. I think. Ultimately, this this album is is an album. It works as its whole unit um yeah. to be listened to all at once um and that's what we wanted to do like we didn't release eight singles we released an album which means that sounds like i'm just saying it's filler <laughs> no <laughs> yeah i no i totally get what you're saying because yeah, yeah i was kind of expecting you know maybe those more single sided tracks to be included yeah. what which could potentially be singles yeah, once you do listen to the album in full, you totally understand why they're in that order and why those songs are on the album, I think. Mm. Firstly, before we go into the actual album and each individual song, let's talk about the album name, Here Lies okay. Colk. Because that's another thing that kind of surprised me as well. I was like, hmm, interesting. Yeah, I, I think there's um, it kind of goes along with the, the artwork. Yeah, we, we went through a couple of things, ideas and names and stuff. None of them really uh, worked, but I quite like that. I think there's something quite seventies about putting your own band name in the title of the album. It's like the the cover is you've seen it presumably. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm currently yeah. looking at it, uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. staring um, into like, the abyss. <laughs> you know, those who are listening may or may not have seen it. I'll, I'll put it uh, up on the screen within this interview cool yeah um, <laughs> but describe it anyway for the for the it's, listeners it's the thing behind us that they can't see which you can't <laughs> which you can't see it's a massive so, black square but they, but they can see the album cover so you, album. you basically have the big black square behind you it's an enormous black square that it, it's painted with like this um this paint that reflects no, absorbs 99 percent 99 of light or, um, so it's like it creates that like void. I think it works much better in photographs than it does anything else. Yeah, but, it's definitely a void. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a completely empty space. Um, yeah. Do you know what I thought it was originally up against that wall? I just thought it was a fireplace. <laughs> that's, that's it's sick. like a fully empty space. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Enormous two meter fireplace. No, but like just the angle it is on the wall of the artwork. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's a fireplace. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> what does this mean? Yeah. Okay, yeah, now yeah. I know it's, I guess it's, is it a painting, would you call it? What would you call well, it? It's painted. Yeah, yeah, I guess it, so. I would say it's painting, as much as like old, you know. You know, uh, you know those really like, I can't remember like where you'd see it, maybe like Tate Modern or something. Just that. one of these just big black paintings and you're meant to like. If that was in Tate, then yeah, it would be yeah. a painting. I think it could be in Tate quite easily. Yeah, yeah, everyone uh, would just go yeah. mad for it because they'll be like, "I can see so much in it." <laughs> I, I, I love those. I, I like to think that you can see what we wrote in it. Yeah, I, I, I like to on it. I like to go to galleries and I like to see black squares. It's one of my favourite yeah things to see, and it's I nice to see a, a huge black square. Yeah. That's actually sincere. I'm not. There's no hyperbole. <laughs> Mark has in there. I genuinely like I know black you squares. Know you um, I was going to say we <laughs> we kind of saw some similar things at that uh, gallery we went to, that exhibition yeah. in Copenhagen. Was not a black space. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Uh, yeah, we we yeah. went to like some was it sex? Dead it was a exhibition. Uh, yeah. Porn exhibition. Oh yeah, yeah it's just porn, wasn't it? It wasn't even sex. <laughs> the artists there, I actually ended up studying for university. So oh, really? yeah, well, well, some of that stuff was very similar to your style of artwork that you produce for the band. Sometimes with uh, uh, yeah. your like single covers and t-shirt designs, some of the stuff in that exhibition was very similar. 
like it was very like pop art kind of stuff wasn't it it was great yeah yeah, yeah it was a really good exhibition i was a was fan <laughs> yeah anyway going yeah. off topic yeah <laughs> slightly uh, yeah the artwork yeah the artwork basically the yeah. whole point of it is um it's like when we were in spain we saw uh salvador dali's house oh yes uh, and in the basement of the castle he built for his wife uh he created a tomb that they would be both be buried in and he filled it with um with like his art and things like that yeah and so it's like the the cover is a a morbid version, you know, is our, you know, is is our grave. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> it's like wow, feeling, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like a grave, but it's like devoted to minimalism and the void. It's yeah, rather than flamboyant surrealism, it's a single color square and a single bouquet of flowers it's um yeah but that also has kind of a connection to the band already because you often have it in your live set i think it's been featured in some of your promo pictures before so i that's what i loved when i saw that i was like i love the consistency yeah. of that yeah. being a part of it yeah the, the flowers are a, a thing it's like um it's almost like yeah. an icon iconography yeah it's but it's our iconography. I yeah, yeah, definitely the consistency thing. Uh, it, it works well, and like kind of the the flip side of the title is kind of like here lies us in record form. Yeah, it's because <laughs> yeah. because we're predominantly you know a live band, and we did struggle with thinking how is this going to you know be able to translate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And because it was recorded on tape, it with a you know with tape, it it literally does lie on the tape. It's sound arranged magnetically. Yeah. On it's, tape. Yeah, it's physical. It's a yeah. thing. Uh, so sense. so what? So, <laughs> so you used like a very old school style of recording, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, do you know what it's called? Like the actual. Thing you did it on <laughs> it's a it was quarter inch uh 16 track tape machine yeah because i saw a picture of it and yeah it looks so cool yeah it is really it's cool. very cool and it's very sound, the sound is just amazing. yeah it sounds sick yeah it's it's a very meaty sound yeah i think yeah it's just perfect <laughs> it's perfect for what you guys do i think yeah. i don't think it, just, it would work for any band but for you guys i yeah. think it's definitely yeah, because that's what I was going to ask you as well. I think the first interview we did, we kind of talked about some of your really weird recording techniques, how you capture your sound. Yeah, yeah. Did you do a similar thing this time, or did you record separately? Did you record in the same room? Uh, a lot of the, the recordings are flat. I mean, <laughs> uh, naturally, like Copenhagen, it was. Um, something that is quite blank from our memory. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> it was the first time that we recorded um, track by track. Um, yeah. We started out by recording all the drums, uh, but I was a bit. You different. were there. I was in the room and I was playing, and I was recording a a di guitar signal, so I could overdub it afterwards. Because right. so I'm yeah. guessing that was just coming through Jade's headphones. Yeah. yeah. So it was kind of it was different to the first stuff we did that we you know that it was, was fully live. Fully live. Yeah. Um, yeah. But naturally, we we have to play together. It's yeah. Yeah. Still a timed base, nodding at each other, eye contact thing. So we got that down and then worked from that structure. Yeah, it was um, first time we did that, but it it was it was needed to get sort of the sound and the quality that we yeah, wanted. Yeah, definitely because. I was going to sort of ask you as well, Tom, because obviously if if people haven't seen you guys live before, you are very animated when when you play live. Uh, how do you sort of like psych yourself up to get kind of in that mindset but be more controlled at the same time when you have to record? Uh, I don't know. I think it's maybe the other way around. I think that it's the live setting that maybe that does that more. Yeah. The 
hates me. But like, he gets grumpy if he doesn't play. So I definitely do. <laughs> irritated. And yeah. Uh, but I, th- I, I mean, even when we're practicing, it's sort of like, a, you know, a diluted version of that. And it's the same when recording. It's sort of. I suppose it gets you into the. Yeah, I think just playing. The vibe. Just generally, <laughs> yeah. Having a loud guitar amp in my face generally yeah. gets the mood to be playing guitar. <laughs> but like, why... you, like you said before, we actually started recording. We kind of, kind of got on this subject, and you said that these songs kind of had to have a bit more structure than usual because normally you would, you know, change bits here and there. Obviously, lyrics used to always change quite a lot in your earlier songs uh, to how like how they recorded. <laughs> and yeah. how you play them live so was it kind of difficult for you to have that structure this time yeah it was the first time i've, I've written down lyrics and, and stuck to them and, stuck to them. <laughs> and i think the way that we did it was very it was a compromise on that because they had to be more structured to play them but we still kept with a basic structure and so when we recorded the drums and the scratch guitar um, that was more or less improvised in terms of mounts and timings and things. But then I would then overdub it based on the, stra- the scratch. And so then it would still have that uh, improvised feel, mm-hmm. but with a better sound. And we've, like all, the, all these songs we've, we've like, played live, so we kind of know where we want to change and yeah. we, when we play them after this we we will still change them but it's just like yeah because usually you you both kind of like look at me look at each other while you're playing and then you decide right we're going to change it here yeah but yeah. yeah obviously doing that in a recording setting is kind of hard so you have to already know when these changes are coming in and, and yeah. that type of thing so so yeah i just wanted to get how how that kind of translates into a recording setting really uh where did you guys record it it was re- recorded at Rum Records in Ipswich. It's a lovely little studio owned and ran by uh, Jamie Robertson. Um, he, I mean, it's, it's all analog. He doesn't do digital recordings in there. It's just tape recordings. Yeah. So no, he also recorded our first two A and B and yeah, second, his, all the singles. Basically, all the stuff that we've released. He, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've ever done. It's you know it's a really nice studio. There's there's no computer in there. It's <laughs> quite weird. Um, it makes things this process a tad slower because you're like, but like you set along things a lot more. You, or you like you go fuck one more take and I'll I'll do it this time because it's midnight. I mean we've been doing this all day. I'm like I'm tired of shit. And then you just get it right and you do it. Yeah, yeah. You have to. But it, but it's worth it. Yeah. Like to get that sound yeah. on tape. So was this was this all kind of done in like the one room or did you do the thing where you like put the amp on the floor again upstairs or downstairs? Whatever you did previously <laughs> with some of your recordings. You did some weird stuff with like some duvet covers and stuff. And then we put that mic in Jamie's kitchen yeah. <laughs> before. We didn't actually, I don't think there was anything off the top of my head that was... You know, as was it, experimental was it and more traditional this time then? There was definitely in terms of the overdubs, there was some pretty experimental guitar things going on. Yeah, like like me and Jamie it would spend like the whole night. We'd be like, all right, let's you know slog a bottle of wine and then make a sick guitar sound. And we made like a stereo phasing, stereo delay sound that sounds ridiculous. And we used it for like 15 seconds of one song. Which you can put, you go through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it took the whole day to do. That's, that's all they did. And then they we, should have been doing it. And then, we, then when we did it, we sat back and went, yeah, that was worth it. <laughs> and it was. It is really good. For those 15 yeah. seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's probably less than 15 seconds. Yeah. We also had a friend on one of the tracks. Yeah. yeah. That oh, was... Really? Um, Maybe we'll speak more about that when it I comes suppose, yeah. to the song. But, yeah, yeah. Um, he was... And we had... 
Well, it was the first time we did that. We had someone else play some extra guitar as well, and it was it was good. It was very refreshing to have someone play who knows how to play guitar um, actually do something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> An actual guitarist. <laughs> an actual guitarist. You know, you know what notes were and stuff. <laughs> Chords. Yeah, and what are these? The song was in without me no. pressing the tuner pedal. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's quickly do like a little run through of these tracks because I'm sure each one is kind of different and unique in how you kind of recorded it or approached it. So let's start with track one. <laughs> Happy death. I mean, yeah, what a way to open. <laughs> yeah, the um, the the title is based on an go for the pronunciation Albert Camus. Um, I'm going to stick with that one. Keep going with that pronunciation. He's uh, my favourite writer, and the book A Happy Death is about a guy who seeks like you know comfort to end up with and eventually finish his life but then there's i suppose that was gonna get stuck uh, the, yeah oh, good point you don't know um, <laughs> you're just hearing this for the first time yeah i didn't know yeah i suppose that the, the, <laughs> Tell me more. the, the track itself is more about like a, a fascination that, that we all have to like die happy and yeah. this this idea that somehow you could die happy which is Seems impossible. Yeah, you can like be in control of that or something, or yeah, yeah you can somehow prepare for it. Or yeah. yeah, and this, you know how you you can spend your whole life focusing on, you know, a decent way to die, which seems ridiculous. Yeah, and you end uh, up not living. <laughs> yeah, um, and then it so the the track the lyrics is more about like me describing like this impossible perfect way to die, like you're you're underwater but you can breathe and you're still and you're like drinking a whiskey or something somehow <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah like all of this could be possible somehow and that you know somehow that something's waiting for you and that it's there and that you die with that in your mind that you can actually go somewhere yeah but obviously in the end it's you know impossible to know any of those things will be in that situation i wasn't <laughs> expecting that so <laughs> i was just going to say I like it. I like the drums. Yeah, I like drums. Yeah. I play the boom booms. <laughs> um, I was just going to say, I like. I think we kind of both chose it to be first because it's probably the most energetic on the album. And yeah. we kind of... Yeah. It's always it in your live set as well, isn't it? Yeah, we play yeah. it first, well, since we've written it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's it's got that perfect, the synth part of the start is just perfect as an opener yeah, yeah. and it's just like I think it's, it sums up the album nicely because it goes from like that's just it links to the title and the yeah theme of death but yeah um and how like it goes from incredibly like big and psyche in the middle is it sort of reflects the rest of the record in that way i guess mm. track two Oh yeah. Oh, what is uh, reminds? <laughs> oh, okay, it's, it's neighbor. No, yeah, my, neighbor. Fa- my fair neighbor. I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, Maybe so you do the talking song. <laughs> yeah. It's just hard to talk about your own. Song. Say something about production or something, or, or the song. You know. Yeah. How did uh, you How did you approach this one in the studio? Oh, that. Why now? No. <laughs> I'm sorry you're going to have to cut this up so much. <laughs> it's, me, it's me. Just every um, song is, I like drums. I like the I way like these drum, drums sound. I'm just gonna, Actually, you can copy, I play drums and then... Copy and paste that and just... Put it in all of them. <laughs> <laughs> even beat it. <laughs> I'll go to sleep. Um, with that song, we kind of um, wrote it in one day and then played it in the evening at a gig. It was amazing. Um, we were uh, just... You'd just written kind of... The, it was like the middle part, really. I thought it was going to be um, a clean guitar interlude between two songs. Um, and I was like, oh, this this will sound crap with fuzz. Because that's sort of the metric for all the songs. <laughs> um, and so then I put fuzz on and it sounded good, which is also the metric for the songs. Um, <laughs> and then I put drums. And then we put drums to it. And, it and sounded, synth. Yeah, and it sounded really really good um, and then we were like 
oh, this sounds good. We, I know, let's just play it tonight. And we did, and it went out really well, and so we kept it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did, uh, has that always had that name, or have you changed the name? The name's always been the same. I, okay. Maybe I just didn't know the name. That's why yeah. I was, like, putting the two together. Because, yeah, I definitely heard it at one of your live sets, so. Yeah, um, quite a lot of the time we name them a lot longer <laughs> after we've written them. Yeah. And the set list is just gibberish. Yeah. The only <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> shorten them. Yeah, yeah. I, I I wrote the lyrics for that one on the way up to the gig, like the hour drive. It was up there, and so I had finished them right before we played. Um, so I had just basically sort of memorised them. I got it quite wrong quite a few times. But no one's one, going to know, are they? Because it's a new I, song, so it's fine. <laughs> I'm afraid. Um, that well, one. We wouldn't know anyway. Yeah, that one's more about like keeping up appearances type the neighbor that wants you to know that he's cool and he's like this great guy when you know piece of shit behind <laughs> doors yeah and it's like yeah it's this this the whole idea of people being you know so outwardly fake and things like that to come across as like you know the good neighbor type when they're you know a rat <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to track three I hadn't heard this song title before. I think it might be the same thing where I've, I think I've heard the song before, but yeah. Yeah, you might have done a long time. Yeah, definitely. The whole song is basically one big build up. But it's I quite think... a new song, isn't it? This one. Yeah, I yeah. feel like we've had it sort of written for a while. Yeah. Um, but just hadn't figured it out as how it would be in the set and things and how it would, it would work. I was actually a bit nervous about playing it live. Yeah. Because when we wrote it, I was like, yeah, this is really cool. It was just like one massive build-up. And I was like, oh, will people get bored? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a, just a... But I think in, in live sets, you definitely need these types of songs sometimes. And I'd say, especially in your set, you probably need that little right. bit of a breather. <laughs> yeah. I have always thought of it as, um, is it need, you need something... And another sound, even though I love the band Sleep, when we saw them, I got very used to his like guitar sound. And so suddenly it, it didn't feel like it was this huge, amazing thing anymore because my ears got so used to it. And I had like this fuzz fatigue where it just sounded like a guitar and it was just less interesting by the end. So I think you need those those breaks where the fuzz comes down and then you you're like your ears come down to this other level and yeah. then when it hits you again it's powerful again just like at the start yeah i totally get that and i think that song does that kind of perfectly because you you're by the time it builds up you are ready for it to just kick in again i think yeah, yeah. I mean, you're kind of just waiting for it to <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you're like come on come on <laughs> hurry up <laughs> You're not going to not put fuzz to this side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, track four. This is one of your most recent demos. I think I think you sent two over to me. There was part one and part two, wasn't there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so these were, this was probably like one that's kind of been released before, but we kind of re... It's after a, a long... It's changed a lot, hasn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. after yeah. all the impro... Yeah, it's after playing it live a lot and yeah. seeing and hearing, you know, what people like. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, we used to play this at the end of our live shows. So how do you pronounce the name? Because I'm, I'm not going to attempt to. It's Unheimlich. It's um, German. Yeah, yeah, it looks very German. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, does that, what does that mean? It means unhomely. Um, it's a kind of an art theory it's a, a freudian term yeah. that basically means uncanny but it's sort of it's in a different way it's in its own unique way that just sort yeah, of yeah it's something that is more in the home or in your life that is out of place out of place yeah. but there and it's kind of yeah it's that makes it uncanny yeah it's uncanny but in in a homely context yeah but yeah it was a uh, part one well, no, part two and part three. Yeah, I was, was going to say that. And I was like, 
I, there was a part three. <laughs> was like, yeah, there was never a part one. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> we're <laughs> awkward. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to be one of those bands, didn't you? Everyone's gonna be looking for part one for like yeah. the Come rest on. of your time. That exists. You just gotta find it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's out yeah. there somewhere. Yeah, I think yeah. The rest of that home demo, we kind of just not threw away. But yeah, because they it, were very long, weren't they? They were like almost eight minute tracks, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. It was just that was like a little bit of experimenting and things like that. Yeah. That was just what we were writing at that time. But and then And then this developed that, and then that stuck, yeah. Yeah, and this kind of worked in that the album and we wanted to curate it so it was, you know, a whole and it worked. But it's like kind of like the perfect end for a side A. Yeah, I'd say that. <laughs> is, is there gonna be a vinyl? <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll have to see. I <laughs> hypothetically, there was that would be you know a lovely end to the side A. Yeah, yeah, I definitely see that. Yeah, now moving on to track five, probably my favourite track actually on the album because I have many favourite cult tracks, but some of them aren't on here. But yeah, definitely, <laughs> Slaughterhouse is just a great track live, and definitely, if it was on a side B. It would definitely be a good track opener for yeah, the other yeah. side. It, so. it, it comes up in with that enormous wall of noise that I think is um, is great for opening a side and things like that. Yeah, I'd say, it's, I'd say it's one of your strongest tracks, I think. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it uh, was, um, not just on the album, just in like, when you play it live in general. It's just definitely one that really sticks out to people, I think. I think it's also like a really good one to play like I enjoy playing it and when we recorded mm. it it was a lot of just playing around with synth like trying to get the like sound perfect mm. but you know we don't want it to sound all right me be boo boo I don't know how to do it <laughs> <laughs> like oh. <Just> pop punk <laughs> yeah, like, I remember you saying when you found out when we like <clears throat> you're like how does this work <laughs> yeah I was very intrigued because <laughs> yeah. all I've heard is the beep boop beep Kind yeah, of stuff before. Yeah. Kind of so many yeah. people just know like synth is like this eighties pop music thing and it's like there's so many good uses for synth. Yeah, and we wanted this kind of drony, but then a sound that si- kind of just sounds like more guitar. Yeah, um, it's, it's a thick yeah. as well as its own thing, that it can do its own sounds. Um the stuff that guitar just can't do. Mm. Yeah. But no, it, so- it definitely works within the context of your songs i think the the songs that it is added to definitely yeah i I remember you saying that you were going to use it for an upcoming show i think it was one at the smokehouse last year yeah obviously i hadn't heard it recorded you just said well we're going to use it tonight and yeah it just definitely it adds like a big i'd say aura to your sound i think yeah so it's a mood yeah definitely yeah it's like the it's like the third member of the band. Yeah. Yeah. He's a member on his own. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't bode well for the ratio. <laughs> doesn't have a gender. Maybe. I don't know why you're assigned gender to our synth. So. <laughs> track six. Obviously, I am quite familiar with this track because you recorded it for a live session we did a couple yeah. of years ago now. Um, yeah, yeah, it's changed it, changed a little bit. Mm, it's yeah. the oldest. Well, it's not even that old, really. But it's, it's the one we because it was never it was never released before. You just sort of recorded it for the live session uh, for the YouTube channel. And it was supposed to release it after that, but mm. then then other stuff <laughs> it just delayed, and then to the point where it's like now it was like oh well this is going to be the first yeah. proper release. Yeah, it? it just changed so much in sound. Yeah. First so much, player, yeah. yeah, can't quite say which one is better because I am kind of, you know, I do like the one we did. Oh, I'm kind I of attached to that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, just because that one is quite special, I think, and obviously yeah. just because we we filmed it as well, so it is literally the live performance of it. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah, but no, I really like this version of it as well. I think it definitely fits in with all the other songs on the album. Yeah. And the way That's it's kind of changed, it it does work with those songs. Three mothers. Yeah, our friend the beard. 
um, Beardy. We know him as Beardy. Um, <laughs> he's the beard. But yeah, he works at the, um, works at the Smokehouse in um, in Ipswich. He's just he has a, this. He's an absolute boy. Yeah, he um, he plays as like a solo act and beard effects, and it's like amazing looping and like sounds developing stuff that's mm-hmm. like crazy. He's like amazing with just a guitar like and he can just build up this immense sound um so we were like oh we wanted something like cello like sort of violin-y but not not a violin not, uh, yeah, <laughs> not things at the same time yeah you know something done like that um and then we were like oh you know beardy makes this like amazing sound with his guitar so we were like we'll get him to do come and do some stuff and it was it sounded amazing it's real yeah it's violin like but it's distinctly guitar as well it sounds yeah. really nice and we kind of added um like a singing bowl as well yeah there's all kinds of stuff like that one has a lot of more layering yeah like a lot that. more layering um it's so kind of hard with tape because you know you only have so many channels so yeah you have to figure it out. yeah but you've got to prioritize <laughs> you have, like a channel where you just like do one clap or something because it's just that's a waste of a channel so I had to be very sure what we were doing with that one mm. that's why it's a bit more synth heavy and things because that's sort of and more droney and yeah like a build up to the last track yeah yeah sort of that leads to the penult you know it's the penultimate track that is more or less a build up for the final one yeah so track eight is fuzz wall Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had to have a track on there named after my favourite pedal. <laughs> um, That's almost a, a band member in itself, isn't it? Your your yeah, trusty pedal. Right. Yeah, we're Good. actually in our four piece. <laughs> the synth and the fuzz wall are yeah. our members. Um, yeah. But I don't know how many fuzz walls you have now. Five. Five. <laughs> Five counting clones. Three. Three proper ones. So you have built an army of them, basically. For Absolutely. The fuzz war. <laughs> one I did actually build, so... Yeah. Was it the one we kind of got stuck in security in the airport with? Um, how many did we have that time? We had two. We bought yeah, two, yeah, two with us. Because yeah. um, one, one just looked like a bomb, didn't it? Through the that x-ray. Was, <laughs> that was my delay. My delay looked like a bomb. He said, the other's are fine, but this one... <laughs> this one's bad. <laughs> It was because it had such small parts and it had surface it mount. So long for you to go through security. Yeah, yeah. and, and it was like held together with like tape. duct tape and stuff. Yeah, it's like, oh, this looks janky. <laughs> this looks like it was made in a garage. Yeah, it was. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I did actually build myself, he was like, "Yeah, no, that's fine." <laughs> so that was kind of a compliment. Yeah, it must like, have looked thanks. pretty professional. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> I thought the guy was being like looking at the synth, being like, "Oh, a piano!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my grand, piano. my grand piano. Yeah. I brought it with me. <laughs> yeah, well, your guitar got uh, swabbed as well, didn't it? Yeah, they had to check and make sure it didn't have cocaine on it. <laughs> I can't promise anything. <laughs> yeah, it's been just at it's been at the venue. venue. <laughs> what, what are you going to do? Yeah, he don't know what happens in these venues. No, dirty highly. places I was going to ask you how is your guitar I think one of the last times I saw it it was on like a workbench in two pieces yes it, it has been stuck back together um, <laughs> I mean it's, it's amazing that was the second was that before or after this album recording that happened after yeah it was after yeah, yeah. we had oh, my guitar part after it was the second before last gig before lockdown yeah yeah and then I had glued together in the week ready for the Saturday of our last gig. <laughs> Ready to break it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it as well. I mean, it's amazing what uh, clamps and wood glue will do. <laughs> it's basically good as new. I would never, never going to play another guitar. Some... Yeah, because, again, it's it's part of the band, isn't it? It's been with yeah. you the, the whole time. Yeah, so. I'm just uh, I'm obsessive about things like that, Yeah. which is yeah, everything. But I, I love that. I like it when bands just use all the same stuff. They dress the same. They never change. Us. Just, just stay the same. <laughs> just <laughs> it's the worst, isn't it? When like you know the next album, you guys are gonna like come back with like 
short hair and wear suits and stuff. Mm. <laughs> Bright <laughs> that's, yellow. That's the worst. You know, you know, it it will be a, it'll be a difference, but it'll be sort of the same. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, I started writing from like a, it, so. a natural progression is fine, where you can still see, yeah, yeah. you know, that that progression, but when it's just like literally a complete change, yeah, and they yeah bands completely change their sound and things and their image it's yeah sure. i'm not a fan <laughs> i think that we, we've got a progression yeah some sort of development yeah in some yeah. way and that has already happened as well obviously since i first heard your your yes. first single up until now there's been quite a lot actually of change i'd say yeah, yeah, I think it's all come through of just playing so many gigs and just yeah i think that's where you learn isn't it yeah yeah you go this is who i'm you know playing for essentially mm. you go this is this kind of crowd that i'm interested in. yeah i'm playing for that one person over there yeah and <laughs> it's like this is how i feel best when i'm playing live and that's the the teller of what is a good track yeah is I how you like feel it. when you play it live that's the only way it can you know you see the light of day I think if it's if it is is good to play live and things, and all these tracks are tested. Mm. Sort of. Well, apart from the last track, which is a complete jam. Yeah, we basically <laughs> the first time we played it is the time it's recorded. Oh, yeah. Okay, wow. It was yeah. And yeah, we played it for ten minutes. Yeah, we played for ten minutes, and then so I could do the lyrics for it later on the overdub. We played it for another thirty minutes so I could figure out where they would go and things. So there is a. Yeah. I'd love to play a whole set that is just that track. Yeah, I mean, we, <laughs> we ended up in like oh, it's. A jam. I mean, why not? Just do it. Yeah, we wanted a jam, and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna. This is very good. I like it. It's fun to play. So then we just. I mean, we play it a lot. Yeah, well, we weren't supposed to. It's good. Really, we weren't gonna really put it on the album. Yeah. At one point. It was supposed to be like a bonus, maybe. And now we just, at the, well, last gigs, we, <laughs> the gigs that feel so long ago, um, just, it was the last track that we played because we can play it forever, how long we want. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just, it's, it's going back to that improvised yeah. stuff. It's like, this one's a properly improvised I one. mean, there's probably mistakes in there. Because <laughs> <laughs> recorded it. Well, I was playing it for the first time. Yeah. But, yeah, the actual drum take is... Well, the DI'd guitar signal from the scratch is mixed in as well. Yeah. Actually, it's, no, um, why am I speaking yeah. out of my ass? Um, <laughs> I didn't overdub that one because um, I couldn't do it. Like, it was too improvised. Where yeah. I couldn't play to it because the changes were so weird. Mm -hmm. um, so we reamped the DI'd guitar signal that I'd played. Um, and we ran it through a huge rig to try and make it sound like it was actually the recording rig that we did. So it was, yeah, obviously still still me playing it, but it was like, I couldn't overdub it for shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just kind of, obviously, it sucks that you can't, you can't tour with this, this album for yeah. a while, because obviously you guys live, I think is, is the biggest selling point of, of the band. Uh, it's definitely what got my attention the most, uh, obviously, I I heard the songs first when you when you first originally sent them over to me, you know, way back when when the first single got sent to me, and I was like, okay, this sounds very interesting. I want to see it live, and it just blew my expectations out of the wall when I saw you guys live. I was like, holy shit! It's like this is yeah something else because you know you you kind of see similar things, but it seems kind of put on in a way. Whereas what you guys do live. It just seems natural to you guys. It just seems to to just work and not seem like corny or you know <laughs> you're, like you're trying to imitate someone. You've kind of made up this identity of the band, and you, you've probably done it without even realizing. You've established this whole theme that you have and the style of songs that you play, which just makes you totally unique to pretty much every other band. That I've seen anyway in the last couple of years. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a big compliment. Yeah, I mean it's the. I like that. I like that. For a long time, we we were always like, what you know, we don't really know where we fit in because we felt that our music was kind of a bit 
all over the place. But it's nice to it's, it's a good like a good thing that we found. You know, oh, that's a really good thing that people like. Yeah, it's and different. yeah, you do get put on some weird lineups sometimes. But yeah. I think what always works about you guys is that you're fascinating to watch live, Wh- whatever gig you're you know playing at. You keep people in the room because people are just they they either can't figure it out or they're just yeah. mesmerized by it because of you know how how you obviously play live and how just into it you guys are and yeah it's just fascinating to watch it's it's never the same either you know i've seen you guys plenty of times and it's always refreshing you know what songs you play how you play those songs like sometimes there's different obviously aspects to them and and that type of thing as well and that's what kind of all bands should do really because it just it keeps it interesting yeah. Because there's a lot of those bands who just want everything tight, tight, tight and just play the songs how they're recorded. And that's kind of boring, I find. You know, yeah. I think you, you do have to put on a show sometimes. And yeah, I'd, I'd say you guys do that probably without even realising. We sort of play with that like idea of, like, I think we're we're well practised, I'd say. We're yeah. sort of like uh, like unknowingly quite a tight band. And we're like... I just think as long as we get through a song. Yeah, we're like, <laughs> we're, we're unassuming in that way. But yeah. then it's like, it's mainly stuff like, I'll challenge that tightness of the band by doing something else. So then that forces Jade to figure out how to compensate for that in terms <laughs> of that. Um, And then once she's started doing that, then whatever I was planning needs to change. And then we need to meet at the same point yeah. for it to work out. I think because we're both, when we write the stuff, we, you know, we put. There's not one person that probably puts more effort than the other. Like it, it adapts to each other's lack of ability. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I think I, mean, I can't do that. Yeah, but exactly. That, but that's what I, I kind of that's what I kind of really like, and what really appeals to me is that like, technically, you're not musicians. Yeah. You're just people that can kind of play instruments and you just kind of play what you want to play. That's the most intriguing thing, I think, is that you are just doing your own thing. And, yeah, I think more people should just do that and stop mm. worrying about what people think of them or what kind of people they want to play to. And it's just like, well, if you just be yourselves, people will see that. And they'll hear that as well, and that will yeah. all just come through. I never realised how many bands like that actually formed, that just formed like perhaps they just wanted to make a band. Like I know, like Bikini Kill, they didn't know how to play any of their instruments, but they're amazing, and they just taught each other and learned and adapted. Yeah, and like some people, they just go, "I want you to be in my band," and like who was that? He didn't know how to play bass or something, and then <laughs> everyone. <laughs> <laughs> But it's like, you just, if you want to do something. Do you mean the Grateful Dead? Do Bill I? from the Grateful Dead didn't add, he couldn't play bass, but he, yeah. but he was a, that's that kind of different because he was a, like a composer. Like, <laughs> and they're all geniuses when it comes to you know writing I mean? music. But, you know, he, like, he couldn't play bass, so he went into a band because he wanted to be in the band. And yeah. he played bass. And he's very, very good bass. Yes. But I like that because that's that's kind of your beginnings as well. You just obviously went to Jade and was just like, can you just play drums for my track? And yeah. It just started from there, and that's what I love about like, it. No, I've only ever played in my room on my own. <laughs> exactly. And then, and we still write it the same way now. Yeah. I do all the um, songs. I record just guitar. Um, now I do it straight into Garage Band. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that going to be in the interview? I can't remember when we were talking about how how underrated the Garage Band is. <laughs> we're recording yeah. it, so you can pop it There's in. There's a half an hour station about how Garage Band is amazing. Yeah, for for demos and just demos. podcast yeah. editing. It's very I mean, underrated. We actually recorded great, great. this whole album on Garage Band. <laughs> yeah, it's like Garage Band analog. Yeah, that's how I would describe the, it. The nineties version of Garage Band. Or even yeah. the seventies version. I don't know yeah, how old that thing was. Yeah, and then I, I show Jade the guitar parts, and then she does. We sort of 
work them out. Yeah, and it kind of always changes. Yeah, and then I, I change the guitar parts. And then... Well, because you go, oh, yeah, I like this, and I want you to play drums like that. I'm like, <laughs> no, because you don't know how to play your drums, and that's not a thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, the songs are based on arguments <laughs> about who can play their instrument. Yeah, yeah. But that's, but that's kind of what I like about it as well, is there's a lot of real simplistic elements to these songs. Yeah. And... Anyone can play them. Well, yeah, yeah but yeah. it's... it's I, I find that them. a lot of the most well-loved songs out there, when you really analyse them, they are really just simple. Mm. Mm. And yeah, obviously there are songs out there that are amazing, which are, like, really technical and... They have all these like changes and tempo changes, that kind of thing. But yeah, I find most of the time when it is just stripped back and there is just that really simple undertone, you just can't go wrong. I yeah, mean, I yeah, mean, it takes a while to get there, obviously, but yeah. Yeah, you do. You, you know, you, you work with what you've got. I mean, if you're... Uh... <laughs> <Right? laughs> There's just two of you, so... <laughs> yeah. There's only so much we can do. Yeah. <laughs> this, this album definitely proves that there is more to Colk than the, the songs you've released as well because obviously people might kind of have that little bit of stigma like oh yeah there are two piece they're going to run out of ideas soon it's all going to sound the same probably no. yeah. <laughs> you know like people kind of have that mindset sometimes with two pieces where it's like oh well they've got this sound and there's only two of them so mm. how much more can it really change but this shows that it, it can change and get a lot better I think so well done <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad you like the the record. It's a great achievement, actually, because obviously, it's it's not easy, and a lot of people think it is to just do all this kind of stuff. No, it took so long. Yeah, it, it, it takes so long, doesn't it? Then you've got to hold it for so long before you can let yeah. anyone see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but obviously, it's getting a great reaction so far, even though it's not technically out yet. I keep forgetting <laughs> that because I've had it for a while. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so when is when is the official release date? Do you have we one? <laughs> reveal quite yeah. Okay. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you do before this comes out, I'll just put it in the description. Yeah. That sounds. That sounds uh, really good. Next month. But yeah, you said next month ish. So yeah, yeah. I, was, I would say we can. Can we can we, say, can we just say June? We can say yeah, June. June. We can yeah. say June. It'll June. Be released. Well, we should probably wrap this up because we've been talking a while again. Um, <laughs> as you, yes, yeah. <laughs> as I didn't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I could, I could literally talk to you guys all night. It's good to catch up with you guys. Yeah, um, well, we're we're going to be doing a live stream for the um the release as well. Yeah, and we've been working, you know, behind the scenes to have it sound really, really good. Because that's got, a, that's another challenging thing, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, we've done a test and it sounds huge. Yeah. And Jamie will be working behind the scenes. Yeah. At a safe distance. <laughs> well, yes, yes, from home. <laughs> um, remotely controlling our laptop to mix it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So just like a really long cable going all the way to his house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's really weird. We were like playing and you could just see the mouse moving on the laptop. Oh, yeah, 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 because you can like, obviously oh, control. Yeah, so like the yeah. faders are up and down. Yeah, yeah I, forgot, I forgot that was a thing. You can control other people's uh, computers, can't you? Yeah. You started looking through my laptop. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's creepy. Uh, you... Yeah, it's perfect for uh, for this situation. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, this is new challenges every day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think it's, in a way, it's going to, Maybe there's there's going to be some good things that come out of it. We'll just we'll Pretty see cool. what happens. Obviously, music isn't dead; it's not dying. No. Uh, but yeah, just support the bands you love. I think that's the best thing you can do. Yeah, and, we just have yeah. to postpone the live shows, but it'll you happen. Know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. As long as you can still kind of record. Luckily, you guys have had all this done for a while, so. <laughs> So lucky. There's so many people we know that like were, were about to record or like yeah. are halfway through, or it's just yeah, that's just not it's not on time. Idea, is it? Yeah, <laughs> no. but yeah, hopefully soon. Well, that's that's going to come round before before live shows anyway. So at least they'll be yeah. they'll yes. be able to get back in studios and and do live sessions soon. Yeah, 
because uh, yeah, we'll we'll definitely do one as soon as possible as well. Yeah, um, which I'm very looking forward to. Yeah, and we, let us know what track you want us to do. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, will you let me choose? Ooh, yeah, yeah. why not? <laughs> okay, I'll have a good, I'll have a good think. We were we were planning to do neighbour, um, but yeah. I'm not bothered now. <laughs> yeah, I can do any. It was just because we're like, yeah, we like that one. We'll play that one. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well maybe you choose one and I'll choose one, but we'll we'll do that after the interview's finished. We'll, I won't put you on the spot now. <laughs> Thank you for uh, for doing this. Thank you for having yes. us. Yeah. Again, all the best with the album. I'm sure maybe. it's going to go down great. Uh, yeah, I hope so. It's been, <laughs> been our baby for a very long time. Yeah, and like I said, there's there's loads of positive reviews coming in. Yeah, so I'm sure you have nothing to worry about. Yeah, it's been so it's been so lovely. Like just it's not even out yet and people are already praising us. Yeah. yeah and it only adds hype as well. So yeah, that's that's what you want. And yeah, hopefully people have enjoyed this little uh behind the recording process interview, I guess yes. you'd call it. Uh, no. It's it's a bit of an in depth about the the record and things. Bit of a chit chat. Chit chat <laughs> yeah. Haven't spoken to anyone. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Um, but yeah, if, if people have enjoyed listening to this, go back and check out the one we recorded a couple of years ago. It was when you guys were pretty fresh, so there was a lot of interesting stuff to talk about in that as well. There was, yeah. And yeah, go check out the previous live session we did. They will be linked at the end of this interview. Link anyway. in description. Link in description <laughs> below. Like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. Cheers, guys. Do what you want. I'm going to tell you. Do what you want. If you don't want to subscribe, you, you don't have to. <laughs> please, please subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to tell you to subscribe. You will do it. Who knows what I'll do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm copying. Uh, yeah, obviously go like all of Colt's social media if you haven't already. I'm sure you have. That's why you're listening to this. <laughs> Stream the album loads when it comes out. That's all I can say, really. That would be very lovely. Thank you. Thank you very me. much. <laughs> Cheers, guys, and I'll speak yeah. to you soon. Yes. Speak to yes. you soon. Speak to you soon. Oh,